Back in the early to mid 2000s, a new type of anime fan creation began to emerge online. Dubbed Fanime, this fan animation was created by, well, fans of anime who wished to pay homage to the shows they adored. YouTube provided the primary platform for this burgeoning medium as creators slowly but surely produced homemade sequels, spin-offs, or in some cases, entirely original works. Rather quickly, Fanime gained something of a reputation for being, shall we say, less than stellar in quality. This wasn't always the case, of course, as some fan groups pulled together to produce some pretty standout works in the genre. Even today, Fanime might have dwindled in popularity and scope, but more than a few creators and groups remain active in producing and releasing Fanime. Amongst all of the Fanime to see their time in the spotlight in the past 15 years or so, one name towers above the rest. This one isn't based off a pre-existing property, however. In fact, this is simultaneously the most derivative and the most original property we have perhaps ever covered on this channel. In April 2010, a user going by the handle SoapOpera46, also known as Yoli-chan to her fans, began uploading the series Neon Neko Sugar Girls to YouTube. The series ran for 10 episodes, with several other videos uploaded to the Soap Opera 46 channel over the years, until December 2012, when Episode 10, Final, was released. The series was preceded by a few other short videos, one of which was supposedly created by Yoli-chan's brother. Nyan Neko Sugar Girls follows a relatively small cast of characters. There's Raku-chan, the cat girl with a heart of gold who's madly in love with Hitoshi-san, himself a human who could perhaps be described as the coolest cat in town. Then there's Koneko-chan, Raku-chan's older, wiser friend who acts as a balance and a guiding voice throughout the daily lives of the three. The show takes on a slice-of-life format for the most part, with each episode concerning a brief period in the intersections of the lives of the main three. Along their adventures, Koneko, Raku, and Hitoshi encounter other secondary characters, like Vetsama and Bokutachi-san. Toward the conclusion of the series, the narrative becomes a bit more consistent as everything builds to a thunderous crescendo of a climax which we won't be spoiling here. Honestly, the entire show is about an hour long and if you haven't checked it out yet, you ought to right now. In the years since the show concluded in 2012, several more videos have been uploaded to the Soap Opera 46 channel, including a bonus half episode, a fan dub, and a COVID-19 PSA featuring Koneko-chan, Raku-chan, and Vetsama. Unfortunately, as of now, there are no known plans for Yoli-chan to continue the series, though there may be evidence to the contrary, which we'll get to in a bit. The series is both entertaining and important because it both encapsulates and parodies and mid-2000s anime tropes to a T. Its style and wit are like no other show we've seen, save perhaps Egoraptor's Girl Chan in Paradise. That being said, Girl Chan is considerably shorter than Neon Neko Sugar Girls and doesn't seem to have the same heft to it. Because it's based primarily on lampooning individual tropes for quick gags rather than providing a lengthy character study, it ends up parodying shonen anime, while Neon Neko Sugar Girls is able to cast its net a tad bit wider with its longer runtime and interest in dissecting cliches from outside of shonen action anime. Unironically, Nyan Neko Sugar Girls is the quintessential late 2000s anime, and like we said, if you haven't checked it out already, you owe it to yourself. It's funny as hell, and it's an important part of YouTube and anime history, so why not? That being said, when we began work on this video, we noticed how many other videos have popped up in recent years discussing the show. If you're interested in a play-by-play -play analysis of each episode, or why the show works as well as it does, we would recommend any of these. Also, side note, for some reason I put why the shoe works in the script. I, I, I can't spell. Not wanting to contribute to saturating the market, on the other hand, we decided to take a different approach. Now that we've covered the show in brief, and hopefully pitched it to you successfully, we would like to instead take a look at the fan community which has arisen in recent years around Nyan Neko Sugar Girls. In particular, we would like to look at a handful of standout fan creations. After the original posting of Neon Neko Sugar Girls, several years passed without much fanfare. In 2017, however, an unexpected pair of videos appeared on YouTube. Fan-made sequel episodes which followed the conclusion of the original series' 10-episode run. 
Episodes 11 and 12, created by user Smelly Ham, were mostly worked on by Smelly Ham themselves, though they had additional help with voice acting from Discord friends. Initially, the plan was to produce additional episodes. As Smelly Ham explained to us when we spoke, I stopped making them because I thought that I should get some more practice before continuing. Also, around that time was when Yoli-chan told me she was already working on an actual season 2. Smellyham went on to say, If there isn't a Soap Opera 46 season 2 soon, I might take another attempt at making one of my own. I do also plan on making original MS Paint content sometime in the future. In conversation, we also discussed the production cycle for these fan-made videos. Smellyham told us, it takes around two to three days to produce an episode at the same level of quality as I made. The tools MS Paint provides you with are very easy to understand, but tedious to use. So it's understandable how a high quality Soap Opera 46 episode could take weeks to produce. Using MS Paint is very tedious, especially because you are limited only to one layer. Ideally, you would do the animation line art first and color slash shade those frames afterwards, reducing the amount of erasing you have to do. I didn't have forethought for much of anything in my process though, so I was pretty much just drawing ideas as they came into my head. I think if you want to make something good, there is a balance to strike between the personality of a video that was created completely spontaneously and the potential quality of a video that was well planned. In terms of inspiration, Smelly Ham stated, quote, To be honest, I created them mostly just for fun, and I didn't expect them to be good, but it did lead me to talking to the original creator of Neon Neko Sugar Girls anyways. After a conversation with her, she had this to say. Smelly Ham's sequel episodes were not the end of matters for Neon Neko Sugar Girls fan creations, however. Only two years later, in early 2019, a user by the name of Shonen Jump 94, also known as Harusan, showed up and began releasing their own take on the Neon Neko Sugar Girls mythos. Much like the earlier releases, Neon Neko Sugar Girls Mayonaka serves as a proper sequel to the series, functioning like a full-length second season. Mayonaka continues the story with the original cast, adding more characters as it goes. In terms of narrative, Mayonaka presents a mystery of sorts, departing from the slice of lifestyle present in the original show. Harusan explained to us that they began work on Mayonaka in October 2018, conceptualizing the show before going on to produce the first artworks for it in November. More or less immediately after this, Harusan began work on producing the first episode proper. The show is once again self-produced, without any additional help beyond voice actors and one translator-san, as they put it. In our conversation, Harusan said that others thought the show wouldn't actually happen, so they pressed on alone. In discussing the production process, Harusan said they began with a story outline which translates into an animation guide and script for voiceover. This is then followed closely to ensure ease of production. Each episode is produced one at a time, with the penultimate episode currently in full production and the final episode's story being finalized after two years of refinement. Animation and voiceover occur simultaneously, with delays happening thanks to this being a labor of love and everyone involved being busy from time to time. That being said, as we speak, Mayonaka is drawing closer and closer to its conclusion, meaning that you all ought to check it out to make sure you're there for the story's climax. Another project we came across in researching this video comes from another year later, this time early 2020, with Koneko-chan Homecoming. Written by Now in Cherry Flavor, Homecoming serves as another take on a proper sequel to Soap Opera's original run of episodes. This one is a somewhat darker take on a second season, being set in what Now and Cherry Flavor describes as a cassette futurist world of 2013 Japan America. The story explores this world as it follows Kaneko-chan after the loss of her dear friend three years prior. The series began as a spin-off when Now and Cherry Flavor suggested to some Discord friends that Kaneko-chan needed more love, and someone else suggested a spin-off in which Kaneko-chan goes back to her Spanish hometown and introduces her family to the wonders of green tea. Now and Cherry Flavor began work on the series soon thereafter, and started posting episode scripts on March 20th, 2020. These scripts were originally hosted on fanfiction.net, but now can be found scattered about on the Nyan Neko Sugar Girls wiki, the subreddit, and the discord for fans of the series. Now in Cherry Flavor explained to us that they had no laid out story in mind, and are instead developing the narrative as they go. 
Sometimes this means that they will compose an episode in only a few days, while sometimes they may take much longer if they're not as interested. That being said, at the time of our conversation, Now and Cherry Flavor was on hiatus temporarily. At present, the episodes which have seen release exist in text format. Now and Cherry Flavor said they have no plans to animate the show, but they've also expressed interest in having it voiced in the style of a radio drama. There are a handful of other projects we didn't have time to cover today, including a DVD release of the entire original run of Nyan Neko Sugar Girls over on the channel Nyan Neko Forever, a fan spinoff known as Neko Neko Endless Rainbow, and a two-episode podcast known as Nyancast. We chose to focus on the three sequels covered in this video, but needless to say, all of these different projects and groups deserve your attention and love. For that reason, be sure to check the links in the description where you can find all of the series we've discussed in today's video. Most of the videos we saw on YouTube dissected or riffed on Soap Opera 46's original run of episodes, but neglected the frankly quite thriving fan community which still exists. In fact, with the amount of activity going on in 2020 and 2021, we might argue Nyan Neko Sugar Girls is undergoing something of a renaissance right now. There's no better time to jump in, watch the original series, and check out all these spin-offs, sequels, and fan projects that have arrived in the decade plus since. On the surface, Neon Neko Sugar Girls might look like a janky, poorly animated fanime which exists solely for laughs and to lampoon similar anime fan creations. In our opinion, however, there is a surprising amount of depth, especially emotional depth, to a series which can so boldfacedly accept how ridiculous it is. The original Neon Neko Sugar Girls feels as though it has tapped into a sort of transcendental stupidity where it is so uninterested in its own depth or value that it becomes almost zen. It's a genuinely important piece of art for this reason, and in conversation with these fan creators, they seem to hold similar opinions to us. Harusan, creator of Neon Neko Sugar Girls Mayonaka, explained, Watashi would, not having be where Watashi am today, without Soap Opera 46 Sama and NSG. Yeah. It is celebration of a G-Con and culture where Minasan can have in creating without worry or reserve. Soap Opera 46 Sama hard work is having the Segoi message that Minasan should not being afraid of being judged for work. Yeah. We should expressing creativity without afraidness and support each other. It is creation of creativity, and, how you say, DIY attitude, yeah. and helping each other to improve as tomodachis. Watashi is seeing judgment all over in the world today, but Soap Opera 46-sama work is a reminder that it is okay to be anata self, and that we should not judge other. Yeah. We are all having fun and having be tomodachis like Raku-chan and Koneko-chan and Hitoshi-san and Vet-sama and Bokutachi-san and Squirrel-chan. Yeah. Smelly Ham explained a similar sentiment, saying, I see it as being on par with Tales Gets Trolled as being some of the best parody series on the internet. I think maybe the most unique part about these series is the feeling they give off. It's as if at times you can tell the creator was laughing while making something very stupid, and to me at least that gives it charm. Now in Cherry Flavor also shares similar beliefs as they explain to us, Neon Neko Sugar Girls, to me, means embracing the inherent silliness of anime and its related culture. It's silly to find deeper meaning in something that is clearly parody of anime tropes and culture, but in doing to your just staying true to the nature of Neon Neko Sugar Girls and such in general. I'm not sure how to describe it in full words, but have this quote I said relating to headcanons. It's a dilemma. Of course, Neon Neko Sugar Girls itself is a parody satire of common anime tropes and making more out of it, going deeper, is silly in its own right. Yet, considering the nature of Neon Neko Sugar Girls, maybe looking for more where there isn't actually goes hand in hand with the nature of Neon Neko Sugar Girls itself. Silly, yes, but see beyond it and whole stories based on nothing but a silly parody are born. 